what you just heard was Twisted Sister, which um, I Wanna Rock, and then you heard the NFL theme song, and then the Bills theme song. <coughs> and now it's time to talk about the Bills and NFL football and other football. As <coughs> like I said earlier, the Bills are in action Monday Night Football against the Seattle Seahawks. And as I said, they need to win this game or I'm done with them for the year. And we'll probably remain done with them until Pagula fires Russ Brandon and gets new blood in there. But anyhow, key to the game is that the defense needs to step up. They still have some injury problems. Um, I think Darius, yeah, Darius is, yeah, Darius is out. Tate and Brian are out, so they're still short-handed on defense. But fortunately, Lashawn McCoy is back. They just need to keep running the ball the first four weeks. If he's a, if he's a hundred percent, I might like our chances a little bit. But um, yes, even though Seattle's banged up, they're not as scary as New England. But it's still going to be a tough game for the Bills. And as I said, this is a big game. I mean, well, I mean, let's face it, folks. The Sabres have not had a big game since April 26, 2011. And the Bills have not had a big game since January 2000. But for the Bills' playoffs, hopes this is this could be a big game. Because right now they are ninth in the division. They are 4-4 four and four with Baltimore, Miami, who beat the Jets, Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh. Four and five is Indianapolis, San Diego, and Tennessee. Houston's five and three. Denver six and three. Kansas City is seven and two. Oakland seven and two. And New England seven and one. So, yeah, this like I said, they just must win game for Buffalo for the Bills. It is Monday Night Football, and the Bills have not won a Monday Night Football game since 1999, which was also the last year they made the playoffs. So, hopefully, they keep that. They can break both these streaks this year. Um, actually, it was, two, it was the year 2000, the, the year after, uh, excuse me, that was the year after that, they made Monday Night Football, yeah, okay. Then they, um, then and they lost Monday Night Football, uh, lost a Monday Night Football game to the Colts 2000. Then they had three straight heartbreakers in 2009, 2008, 2009. 2007 was against Dallas, they had the, um, it, it, they were up 24 to, um, 10 with a little over two minutes left, and they blew. then the Cowboys hit a field goal. And then um, got the outside kick and had another field goal. So that was a Billsy loss. 2008, um, they lost a, a field kick. They lost the Browns 29-27. Trying to save us, trying to save their five and one start that year. But then, of course, the kick went wide right. 2009 was McKelvin fumble against the Patriots, where McKelvin fumbled. So that's three straight heartbreaking losses. And then last year they lost a close one in New England 20-13. So. Monday Night Football has not been kind of the Bills, so will we have another heartbreaking loss tonight? Tune in, we will tune in, and we will find out. Or maybe you don't want to tune in, because, um, yeah, because it's Bills. <coughs> All the football talk. Ravens beat the Steelers 21-14. to Looks like they decided to start and to start this game with 10 minutes left. It's too late now. Maybe they should have tried to win a couple hours ago. Tomlin's, stay, Tomlin's been doing a bad coaching. The team is a dumpster fire. This was the worst game I've seen the Steelers play. Steelers fans should be happy with Tomlin as a coach, but this is on him. He has two weeks to prepare, and they end up with 11 penalties in the first half. They only have two first downs in the fourth quarter. Your quarterback had knee surgery four weeks ago, and you started against the Ravens. If you don't trust your backup, backup quarterback, why is he on the roster? Tomlin, this is on you. Chiefs beat the Jaguars 19-14. I expect the Chiefs to win, but there are some things about this game that scare me. One, the Jags are mad and just got a potential wake-up call and firing the offensive coordinator. While the new offensive coordinator, number two is while the new offensive coordinator doesn't have much time to put to bunch of bench to bunch of new players on the offense. Play calling has been t tenacious and just changed, and the Chiefs don't know how to. This means they're going to have a much easier time scheming the Chiefs' defense than the Chiefs' defense is going to have this time scheming them. Alex Smith is most likely going to be a quarterback, and so there's always a chance the offense just made it crap the bed. Giants beat the Eagles 20-23. Like I said in the past, Carson Wentz is all is good, but he's all hype. The Dallas Cowboys showed that Dak Prescott's the better player, and now the Giants were dismantling the Eagles while the Cowboys blew them away the Browns. Doug Pedersen's um, invisible coach and Wentz playing like a scared dog in a thunderstorm attributed to the Eagles' loss. I'm not sure how this wasn't a blowout, in favor of the Giants. I don't think the Eagles would win the Super Bowl, but it's clear for the losses that they aren't as bad as it seems. They need to execute better, and Pedersen needs to be smart while being aggressive. 
Those fourth down calls weren't aggressive. They were stupid. Cowboys beat the Browns 35-10. <coughs> Browns might go winless this year. Go figure that even after Cleveland wins the championship, they have, they're they still the most miserable sports city as the Indians blow a 3-1 lead. And now the Browns might probably going to finish 0-16. What's happening, meanwhile in Dallas, what's happening there is um, what happened in New England 15 years ago. Tony Romo and Drew Bledsoe went down. They get a, a rookie quarterback, Dak Prescott, and Tom Brady. And he looks, they, they both look great, and I bet you the Cowboys are going to be dominant for 20 years. Now that brings the question. Should the Bills make a move for Tony Romo? They really need a quarterback, because they're really not sold on Tyrod Taylor as a franchise guy. But we, it, and Romo's a good quarterback. Of course, we've been down this road 15 years ago with Drew Bledsoe. So, hit me on Twitter if you think we should make a move for Momo. Lions beat the Vikings 22-16. Terrible clock management by the Vikings coaching staff in the fourth quarter touchdown drive. A call timeout on third down with 27 seconds left when they should have run it down to about 15 seconds. That's the way you play. Don't get third to go it out. If you have time to call your last time out instead of fourth level play, you have to know that Matthew Stafford and Matt Prater don't need a few more seconds. Panthers beat the Rams 13-10. I am really baffled. Why is Goff starting? Like, the way I see it, at least give the chick kid a chance. That's how it was beginning for the season with Dak. At least if we lose a lot because of rookie co- learning, that's okay. But Fisher's trying to prove that people, they just rare or something. Saints beat the 49ers 41-23. The Chips just thinks he's back at o, Big O. You need to play defense in this league, Chipper. How about Canada defensive coordinator? He's not doing anything. Chargers beat the Titans 43-25. Mariota went 27-43, 313 yards, 3 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. Fans are all over him for the last interception that cost the Tennessee game. Every quarterback goes through growing pains in the first few years. If you look at Mariota's number, he's way above average. Look at Peyton's for giving me at Rios. Way worse. So relax on the hating. Colts beat the Packers 31-26. The way Rodgers regressed is so crazy, quickly is crazy. He's been more lucky than good. He's been playing horrible the last two years. He got lucky early and then bailed out on by a receiver that should have been a pick. Finally, for Sunday Night Football, Raiders beat the Broncos 33-20. The tie is officially turning the AFC West. Broncos have had a great run, though. They need a year or two to upgrade their offense. But they'll be back. Congratulations to the Raiders for turning the organization around. The fans will wait a long time. But it could be funny if they, they finally turn their organization around, they finally get good, and then they, and they might be moving to Las Vegas. So, they better win the Super Bowl. That would be a, win the Super Bowl this year. That would be a huge blow to Wolfman. But meanwhile, for, for um, Denver, the team had faced adversity before. It's nothing new. They're still 6-3, and three, and they control their own destiny and make the playoffs. They may not be the juggernaut they used to be, but they're still contenders. Hopefully the secondary gets healthy. They will patch up their run defense, and they will beat Breeze and company next week. The bye week will be a great deal to help them get, everyone get healthy. So, I didn't, that was the only game I have to say I watched the whole way through. So, I got to tell you. Penalties, penalties, penalties. Refs throw way too many penalties in the NFL. No wonder ratings are down. College football, we saw some blowouts. Ohio State beat um, Nebraska 62-3. Well, I can't say I didn't see that coming. From the moment they took the field, the, the Huskers weren't ready to play. I see them walking around and look, they looked emotionally drained. I think they're running out of motion for so long as with Sam Foles passing away that I think it finally caught up to them. Ohio State was nothing but class with all the tributes to Sam and the respect shown in the program and Sam's final dad. I think Nebraska will be group and be back. Another team that looked like an autopilot, Clemson, Syracuse, losing 54 0 to Clemson. Their defense has looked pathetic all year long. Yeah, I think Syracuse needs to be completely revamped. They had a nice winning streak, but it's a dead season for the Orangemen. We'll be getting back to the music after these commercials. After these messages, we'll be right back. If you have requests, if you want to talk to me about sports, if you want to talk to me about anything, hit me up on Twitter at JRedShow. And here's a public service announcement from WGCC.